All right, welcome back to the garage. Mike Torino here. Is going to be part two of the sissy bar on the Royal Enfield. If you look at the previous video, I was toying with the idea of creating a sissy bar so I can uh, attach a waterproof duffel bag to it when I when I take road trips on the bike. Going back to uh, Manila this week, I'm going to attend the Phil Marine trade show, which is a really cool trade show. I'll put a link in the des description. I've never never been there, never attended, but it's it's like a collection of civilian military uh, offshore or near shore, anything related to um, the marine uh, industry, recreation, as well as commercial. Riding the bike, I can be easily overheated. Uh, the main reason is because I don't want to wear anything less than my leathers. Uh, in the case I go down, I want to I want to come back up with my skin. But with that, you get overheated quick. So I want the ability to uh, be able to remove a leather jacket or a jean jacket and strap it to the sissy bar. I'll show you what the sissy bar it looks like now after part one but this is going to entail just uh, welding some attachment points on it and maybe constructing a, a little shelf on the back not maybe I need a shelf on the back to support whatever I'm gonna put on there and I'll just use bungee cords or rope to keep it from flying off so let's take a look. This is the material that I have so far. I've got some round bars. I, I pre-made some of these attachment points that I bended up to the bar itself. This is what we did in part one. I, I bent this and then I TIG welded it here just for variety's sake rather than MIG. I took it to my machine shop friends and they reduced the end here to fit inside the aftermarket mini backrest that I have. And then I, I drilled some through holes on here to, uh, to use this pin to keep it from falling off. But it, it it's so snug in there, I'm not even sure it would fall off without the pin. Let's fit the bar up on the bike, then we'll kind of strategize on where I want to put these attachment points and how I want to go about making a shelf. First thing I need to do is remove these these caps. These are just plastic caps that, that come with this backrest. And then the bar just, just like that. It does look kind of weird. <laughs> I mentioned that on the original video. It's it's definitely non-standard, but why not? So I think these two little little hooks that I have here can maybe go something like this. One up here with my remaining stock of bar. I want to try to create a shelf. I'm gonna to try to bend this around like a like a half moon. On the half moon, once it's once it's there, then I'll put uh, like uh, supports radiate radiating out from the center, and that that would complete a shelf. And maybe I'll make it a little higher so I can put. A, one or two supports under it and it won't be blocking the tail light it'll still leave me plenty of room to to stack something on there and like I said if I get if I get too hot I can uh, just take off the leather jacket strap it to this or or take the if it rains take off the jacket and, and put the rain suit on so enough talk about that, that's easy. Now the hard part is how do I do my bends? I've got, 
I've got a couple benders. The main one that I use is this. This is anchored to my my flip table here. So here are some of my dies. And some of these are for bigger diameter of stock, but I'll probably use this 10 16 or 14 probably the 10 and then this and then this one here this is always kind of a a puzzle for me to to figure out how to set this up for the proper bend radius. <laughs> it's not looking, not looking good. But so we'll just keep going. I think I should have used the, the, the larger die. I think that's my problem. Not too bad. I think if I can get, I don't know if you can, you can see this, but it looks like there's a kink here. If I could fix this up here and then put some more bends over here, it might, it might work out. It used to be straight. Okay, here's what we got. I think maybe I should have just said to myself at the beginning, let's just make a circle. And uh, that might be something we could work with there. That's kind of what I want. That's not really what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted like a like this area here where my hand is to be flat and then then on each left and right would be kind of a sharp turn we could probably still do it it's just uh just a matter of working with it but let's continue oh so here's what i came up with i know it's kind of hard to see the lighting and the, the background's pretty awful but um, basically I made a circle or kind of a circle and what I think I'm going to do is take it off and and cut this and then weld it but this leaves a, a nice nice room here to get in my bag here doesn't block my tail light or my plate with the stock that I have left I'll come back 
and figure out some radiating supports like this in some kind of fashion like that. Maybe I'll flatten up this end right here. <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, it didn't start out too good. I'm not the uh, world's greatest bender and I failed at geometry. Matter of fact, I didn't even take geometry. We'll make it work, won't we? That's pretty close. It's closer than I can ask for. I think it better weld it before I sl it slips off. Take some measurements again, see what, see if we made out all that. Right. It's, yeah, it's fairly 10 in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's right on, that's 10 in the middle. I mean, there's some, there's a little, a few kinks, you know, here and there. Maybe if I had an anvil, I could. If I had an anvil, I could probably make them worse. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get a hammer later and see what we can do. But that's pretty close. I might just tack it up. But let's go see before I before I do any welding. Let's see what what side I want this to go on. Do I want it to wrap around like that? And then that way I could find the best, the best, you know, part of the circle to, to go where. Or I could put it like this. I kind of like this. But This will turn out to be a nice 70s style sissy bar. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going. All right, here's what we got after welding. Got the weld right here, and I decided to put it put the ring on the outside because I realized if I put it here if I have a passenger two things one it'll dig in their back and number two if I do want to put a put a pee pad all the way up and down here it would uh, it would impede that so the ring is going on the outside towards the rear it's leveled up nicely. I think I decided against trying to flatten this unless I change my mind again. Okay, I did a little work off camera because it was just a lot of back and forth and measuring and cutting and grinding. I'll show you where I am now. We've got the circle is welded up and grind it up I welded the the V part here what you see is for the vertical support to carry the weight of anything that I put on there it's welded back here need to clean up this with some grinding later but right now I think I've got everything level now as you can see this is a little bit out of level and I'm leaving it like that because when you see when I put weight on it it'll come back it flex. so I I put some pre you can call it preload you know when I put weight on here it'll it'll sag down to neutral but then as far as there's 
this way. That's pretty close as I can get. From the side, it looks pretty good. And from the rear, uh, I'm liking it from the rear. Yeah. The original original bar here, the vertical bar, it had a little twist to it uh, when we started. There's not much I can do for that. But I'm going to clean up these welds. And I'm not sure if I'm going to leave the patina on it like that or paint it, but that'll be a decision to, to come. What I'm going to do next is weld the the horizontal or the vertical supports and then also hit the the two sections of the circle and go from there. I'm ready to put the final final welds off it, then we could take it off and then do more work off the bike.